Is devotion to Mary based on scripture? Who was Our Lady? Who were her parents? Where was she born? St. Anne and St. Joachim. Where are they in Scripture? Are they even there? So welcome to this episode of Salve Maria, the podcast of the Heralds of the Gospel, this time fully dedicated to the feast of the birthday of the Mother of God. Welcome to Salve Maria, the podcast of the Heralds of the Gospel. Salve Maria and welcome to this new episode and today is really beautiful because the program today is dedicated to Our Lady and what a better title than pronouncing her name as the, the, the title of the program Salve Maria. So I say a big Salve Maria to Father Arthur. Salve Maria. Father Arthur is the superior of the Heralds of the Gospel here in Canada. Brother Justin Bonian, Salve Maria, Brother Justin. Salve Maria. Brother Justin is the head of the religious um, department of teaching here in Guiding Light Academy in Toronto. And of course, we are the three Heralds of the Gospel. And what a beautiful day today because this program is fully dedicated to Our Lady in the time when uh, we are close to celebrate her birthday. What a birthday, Father Arthur. This is, uh, you know, this, this is wonderful to do a postcard on her, uh, especially related to her birthday. Mm. And the saints always say that famous phrase in Latin, de Maria nunquam satis. Exactly. The about of Mary, there is never a bottom of, 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 of the things that could be said. So, where do we start? Other than saying that she is God, you can say everything. Some theologians say this. No, you can say everything about Mary, everything <laughs> wonderful. Other than saying that she's God, of course. I think a lot of people who have objections to devotion to Mary, firstly, misinterpret devotion. No. Uh, um, and, and in with some of the ones who are in more of a lower theological idea, it really is a comparison, which is a really sad thing, really sad. But it's a comparison. It's why her, why not me? So she was born without original sin. Why her? Why not me? Since mm -hmm. I was, then she couldn't be. And it's, and he listened to the arguments and the arguments tend to be rotate around this point of, of a sort of comparison, a sort of jealousy that she was treated <laughs> differently. She was, and it's just sort of, you know, just admit it. She was the handiwork of God. Of course. And admit it, right? She is, you know, the 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 the, el the elevation and and the structure of devotions after the latria which you know worship we give to God the first one who gets veneration devotion is Our Lady and let's put it this way if you don't have devotion to Our Lady your scriptures are wrong and sorry to irate you know some of our separated mm -hmm. brothers but it is true i mean if we don't if we because of our understanding on the scriptures no i think it is quite wrong so father i see that you have a lot of quotes there because we are going to probably be very very based on the holy scripture to come because some people say no oh what but where is our lady in the in the in, a, in of so, so little in the, in the new testament so i mean what is she in the old <laughs> testament exactly. right uh, and and mm, yeah we always say you no know, most of our our catholics you know sometimes we don't read the bible and that puts exactly. us in troubles so when it comes to defend our faith she is actually in the most important parts of the bible yes the most important events of the bible she's there the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, she's there. The death of our Lord Jesus Christ, she's there. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, she's there. Pentecost, she's there. <laughs> so there, there are, it's good to, 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 to remind everyone that there are 15 direct reference of Mary in the New Testament. Direct ones. Direct ones. Mm. Because we also have something called the typology. The typology is when the, no, the, the, the Holy exactly. Scripture goes and chooses, uh, no, chooses, no, God actually inspired those books, and then he selects some types that symbolize things to come later on. It's like someone who uh, starts a, a book by by telling the the characters that you know that are symbolized and later on are going to come. It was also preparing the Jewish people for the coming of our Lord, obviously, but also preparing them for Our Lady. Right? It was like a a sort of cookie crumbs to allow them to understand where they needed to follow to reach the the person of Our Lady, so they wouldn't be surprised. I think it's good to remember that. that the, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 1, he gives a, the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
and it is a wonderful thing because he's going to give the genealogy of Joseph. But at the end, he's going to say that Joseph was married to Mary, and it is from Mary that Jesus was born. <laughs> Actually, in a certain sense, not from Joseph, because he, uh, Jesus is the son of Mary and the Holy Spirit. And also probably what differentiates us Catholics from you know many misconceptions is the fact that uh, the Catholic Church teaches us that we have, of course, the Holy Scripture, then you have the Magisterium, and then we have tradition. And those are the three main elements that help us to understand. And um, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but fathers of the Church, they say that uh, uh, if God had given us the Scriptures and didn't give us a teacher, Of what use? Which is the magisterium. What use? Right? Yeah. It would be condem a condemnation to completely, a complete disaster. Okay. So this is beautiful to have the three elements. It would be like a ship without a captain, huh? No, the captain. I But mean. It, uh, without a captain and without a rudder. Yeah. Sorry. Because don't forget, this is really important. This, And this is where a lot of people get. Our Lord it didn't arrive one beautiful day in Nazareth walked into the synagogue of Capernaum and gave out his latest book, the, the Gospels. No. Right? That wasn't how it worked. And the, the, the Gospels were produced by the Catholic Church. The, the, the Gospels were a product of the Church. Of course. Not the other way around. The Church is not a product of the, of the Bible. No. And some people, oh, that sounds terrible. But that's very true. Because the Bible that we have today is produced by councils of the Church. But They finally resolved everything. I think it was Hippo or Ephesus. It was towards 400 AD. So 400 years, they were still working through what was going to be Scripture, and that's why we end up with slightly different versions where you are. But that wasn't the most important. The most important was the Eucharist. Precisely. The most important was the sacraments. Mm -hmm. What was given on by the apostles, the letters of, of Ignatius and uh, Polycarp and all the rest. Of, and that's where you miss out when you go sola scriptura. You, you're missing out so much. Completely, because actually, when not a church was born from a book. The church was born from a person, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He founded that, uh, the, uh, the church. Then came the, the, uh, the, the written uh, text, etc. But th this is just... Uh, an auxiliary uh, element when saint paul preached again he wasn't handing out books no right i mean and there's a quote that you always hear the quote of from timothy where saint paul tells <laughs> timothy it's good to to use the scriptures but what scriptures is he talking about he's of talking course. about the old testament because timothy's mother was mm -hmm. jewish so he was acquainted with the jewish text he was telling it's good to use the old testament when you're preaching And the letter to the Thessalonians precedes sure. the four Gospels, yeah. by the way. <laughs> so yeah. the four Gospels were not there yet, was St. Paul was already, um, well, writing. You know, and, and, but, but yes, uh, that's right, but I just think he uses the, the Holy Scripture, the, the, the Old Testament. So then we have also, uh, in the Gospel of St. Luke, we have uh, Mary is mentioned at the Annunciation. So the angel comes and and, and uh, the annunciation is done to Mary, and that's the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mary is there. Mm -hmm. Then we have also St. Luke. We have the visitation to her cousin Elizabeth, who's mm -hmm. a magnificent, and she is going to sanctify the forerunner of whom? Of the the Savior. Well, Father, actually there is something that since today we are, you know, we are talking about Our Lady and there is no limit to talk about Our Lady. Uh, when we talk about the visitation, the visitation is one of those mysteries that are absolutely phenomenal. Fantastic. Fantastic. Because also, I mean, this is a topic about, you know, several scholars, former Protestant, now Catholic, you know, Scott Hahn and different, you know, different famous ones. Um, they say, okay, in order to read the scripture, the Holy Scripture, we need to read the whole work as a whole of course exactly and we cannot separate this no. or that no we need to we need to yes there are books there are different genres different languages but it needs to be written uh, read sorry as 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 a whole book and so what happens he says well how did god do in the times of moses mm -hmm. no did god act directly no he didn't so what did he do he acted through moses yes. and what was the sign of presence of moses it was the ark of the covenant Yeah. And the Ark of the Covenant is there, right? What basically God uses. And the Ark of the Covenant gets lost. 
for a while. At the time of Jeremiah. Well, actually, mm-hmm. several times. And David, King David, actually finds it again. Mm-hmm. And when he finds it mm-hmm. again, you know, to bring it to, 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 to the people and so on, you know where he finds it? In the mountains of Judea. Mm-hmm. And he finds the Ark of the Covenant exactly in the area where the visitation happened. Beautiful. Beautiful. And so there is the book of Samuel mm-hmm. where King David is very happy. He dances, he sings, and also he says, Who am I that the Lord gives the, 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 the ark to me? And when we read the visitation, it has Elizabeth all the different Eccles. elements. Precisely. It's really beautiful. So David is already singing to the mother of the Messiah, the real ark of the covenant, because the ark of the covenant had the Ten Commandments, the, the, the law of God. But then Mary is going to be the Ark of the Covenant, which is the body of, uh, of, of God. And David's ancestor will be the Messiah. Yeah, So we end exactly. up with all these different strands that connect together. It's phenomenal. That's so, beautiful. So Everything we related. invite everybody to read the book of Samuel. I think it's the first or the second. And then mm-hmm. also to read the visitation. And we're going to find, if I'm not mistaken by heart, sorry. So if we read the two... It's going to be fantastic. The relation <laughs> with, with the Magnificat, no? the Magnificat the, of Mary and the Magnificat of uh, David. No? Yes. Beautiful. No, it's, it's Another point about the Annunciation that's also fascinating is that within the tradition of the Church of Alexandria, uh, and this was exported because of the exiles of uh, St. Athanasius when he was exiled to Lyon and into the, into the West, uh, and then he would preach. He was a great preacher, a great doctor of the Church. But one of the points that was a tradition, which some people say it came from the Jewish tradition, was the 25th of March was the day in which Adam left the garden. It was the beginning of our history. Oh. <laughs> so the fact that the 25th of March is the, the day of the Annunciation is the beginning of the world as we know it. Um, and in the Alexandrian church, the biggest festivals happened on the 25th of March for the first few centuries, because that was the marking. It was when the redemption began, in the same way that when sin entered into the world, that was when sin was going to be eradicated. Huh. This is so many symbolisms, oh, no, 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 right? Wonderful. But Father, since we're in the beginning, and I, I, I know I know there are, there are many, many quotes yes. there to go, but can we bring the audience today a little bit to the figure of St. Joachim and St. Anne, who are the parents of Our Lady, because we are talking about the scriptures. And uh, Father, you were commenting before, uh, before we, we started the program, that most of the proofs and the, and the, the, well, the names, actually, mm-hmm. are not in the, in the Gospels. The names? No. The names of St. Joaquin and St. Anne, but they come from... Another book. Another no. book. And which one is that, Father? The Proto-Evangelium of St. James. Hmm? That's, that's uh, in Apocrypho. But it's a, a very considered uh, book, and uh, maybe not inspired. It doesn't. It's not part of the Bible, but still, it's a historical book, very much reliable. Hmm? And he's the one who's going to say that uh, the mother was uh, Anna and the father was Joachim, hmm? and he will tell the story how they uh, how they met. You know, was was Prophet si- uh, Simeon. Who, uh, who married them. Mm-hmm. Yes, because Simeon was not just uh, the, no, uh, showing up there in the middle of the, of the temple when, when uh, our Lord uh, is presented. He had already a long history. He was old, no, of course. So, so at, at the moment that Jesus is presented in the temple, he is old, but he, uh, he knew Anne and Joachim for a long time. Hmm? And uh, he advised them to get married. It's, it's amazing, no? Because he's also the one who is going to advise Mary to get married to Joseph. <laughs> so to convince Mary to get married, so it's, it's, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Huh? So, um, so he tells the story how they um, they got together. Then for many by years, the way, Joachim was a wealthy, man. very wealthy, very wealthy person, exactly. And and he was a, a great donor of the temple, mm. but they couldn't have children, and almost for twenty years they couldn't have a, a child. So once. Uh, um, Joachim goes to the temple, and a priest, you know, uh, uh, takes uh, Joachim aside, and he says all kinds of things against him. This is a, a curse from God, etc., etc., etc. Actually, Father, yes, since we are there, because we, we also brought here today for the people to see, 
I got a book about the paintings of the famous Giotto, who painted a chapel. It's a chapel of Scrovegni in, in Padova, in Italy. Mm. And his paintings are fabulous, right? And we have the book here, but we're going to be projecting now for everybody to see. You know? And one of them, right, that, 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 that we have here, that, that now we are going to see in the screen, is uh, the depiction of exactly of what you're talking about, Father. Precisely. Because yeah. it was a scribe that goes and expels him. He... Joachim was going to offer his sacrifice, and this one goes and says, "How come you come to offer a sacrifice when you're cursed by God? Exactly. You 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 cannot be here because this uh, the offering of the sacrifice is only for the blessed, and you I mean you don't have children, therefore you must have been cursed by God. So get out of here. And what's really nice about Giotto Giotto is the how he plays with the eyes. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, the, when you look at his paintings closely. And you see the exchanges of gazes that the characters have are absolutely fascinating. Fantastic, fantastic. And honestly, I mean, um, well, some of us had, had the joy to go to to go there and, and see these things. And actually, when you see the eyes, and you can see now, I think we're going to be projecting it right now. It, his eyes almost move you to tears. Of course. Because, okay. and then you even see the little sheep there that she's enchanted, you know, with him, <laughs> right? Just trying to console him somehow, you know? Uh, but but you, you can see, you know, the, the tremendous pain and everything else. Of and also he couldn't believe that the priest was so evil because what the priest was saying was, was wrong. Yes. It didn't correspond to what was in his heart. So he, he was seeing that the priest was not But being a just man, he was also blaming himself. Maybe it is, mm, you know, my fault. Uh, my fault, my hidden sin, or something like that. Actually, he doesn't go back to to Saint Anne, and he goes to to the field, and Saint Anne realizes that he had gone to the temple and didn't come back. So both are, you know, and she was very afraid sad. that he had died exactly. for five yeah. months. She didn't know anything about him. So then, the angel comes. Comes the same way that an angel came to announce. Uh, to Mary that that that, um, that Jesus was going to to be born, an angel came to announce to Saint Joachim and Saint Anne that they will have a child. That they had to get together again. They will have a child. They they, they had to meet at the, at the, uh, the beautiful gate of uh, Jerusalem, and uh, and so they they have the child. But they were expecting. They were thinking that the one could be a boy, you know, because obviously. You know. <laughs> and then they realized now it's a girl. But she was so so nice, so so nice that they were absolutely fascinated with the with this girl, which was, was beautiful. And uh, they had promised that if they had a child, they would offer this child to the temple when the child will be three years old. Father, we have here the words of the angel, if you permit, because mm. they are so nice. Just a quick reading: Don't be afraid, because God will give you a descendant who will be admired by all generations for centuries. Beautiful. What a Beautiful. what a way of blessing. Exactly. So uh, then they they present uh, Mary in the temple. Mary stays in, in the temple for for some years, and then finally Simeon, you know, um, who managed to convince Mary, who wanted to stay a virgin in order to be the servant of the mother of the Messiah. Uh, he convinced Mary to get married, you know. To be able to change the mind of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you have to be something very special, you know? <laughs> because you know, how can you change her mind? But Father, can we also focus a little bit, maybe, in the in the presentation of Our Lady? Because you know, there is a beautiful aspect there, Brother Justin, uh, that is this, you know, that um, from the same place where Saint Joachim had been expelled, when they went to present Our Lady mm -hmm. in the temple when she was three years old. They arrived to the same place. The same place. And now St. Joachim and St. Anna are very consoled because from the very place where St. Joachim had been expelled in such a painful manner, now they are there presenting Our Lady. Beautiful. Right? And how much... And she was the perfect lamb, right? Where yeah, she was exactly. going to offer a lamb Innocence. that was with blemish. Mm. It was... It was yeah, you know, it, it was a good attempt, but <laughs> Our Lady was perfect. Was she was born without original sin? So you can imagine the beauty. You know, it's only Our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, and Mary who were born without original sin. So she was absolutely beautiful. And apparently, and country of America and, and others say that that you know that Mary could speak already when she was she was born. She 
already understood that God exists. Well, no original sin, exactly. Yeah. Right? So she, she knew from the beginning of her life that God exists. We only realized that God exists later on, you know, when we grow up. And some people not even. Eh? <laughs> some people <laughs> take some long time <laughs> to realize it. <laughs> But Mary, no. Mary, from the first instant of her um, life, she understood that, Mary, that, uh, that uh, God existed. And then angels came to her and talked to her and explained many, many things. And the, the infants of, uh, of Mary must have been absolutely beautiful. So then comes the presentation in the temple. She stays in the temple. Then she gets uh, married to, uh, uh, to, uh, to Joseph. And then it comes, you know, the, uh, the, the fourth reference is the, nati the, the nativity of, uh, of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, which is in the Gospel of St. Matthew, um, chapter 1. Father, what about the place of birth of Our Lady? Because for those who have been in the Holy Land, for instance, right? Yeah. Well, the Holy Land is a very interesting place because uh, no. there are also many traditions and uh, and also, well, you know, different uh, churches and whatnot. But um, uh, so Our Lady was born, and here is not it's not definitive where she was no. born, right? There is not a very you know definite um, answer to this question. There are different possibilities, but the strongest one is that she, she was born in Nazareth, in the same house uh, of the uh, of of the Annunciation, the same place where the angel later will um, will come and tell her that she was going to be. But the for mother. for those who go to, to also to to Jerusalem, don't think this is a hoax, right? They also have because the uh, Saint uh, Saint Joachim and Saint Anne, they they were very wealthy people, mm -hmm. and they lived close to the temple. And so when you go through the gate of St. Saint, Saint James, I think is th th that's the one where, where, where he was martyred, and now it's, it's called the, the, gate, the, the Lion's Gate, there is the Church of St. Anne. The Church of St. Anne. No, where the, where the pools of Bethesda, where that miracle happened, where the water would be moved, and then you know, anybody who was sick needed to be brought to the waters and be cured. So that's that place. So that's also another tradition. Yeah. Also, they they, that, they had two, at least two houses, no? At least two. And also, you have so you have Nazareth. And Nazareth, and, and, that's and, and one. Jerusalem. Then you have um, uh, the other tradition is uh, there at the Lion's Gate nearby, right? The Church of Saint, present Church of Saint Anne, and there is also a place called Sepphoris, which was uh, a place where Saint Joachim and Saint Anne lived as well. Okay. And that's according to the the proto Evangelium, Evangelium of Saint James. James. So you know. So for those who have the possibility, you can also visit the three places, oh, just wonderful. in case. <laughs> no? oh, wonderful. wonderful. But that's why things differ. Eh? But um, yeah. So another reference is uh, in St. Matthew and St. Luke, we have the, the visit of the three wise men mm -hmm. that come with uh, gold, incense, and mirror, and, and they, they worship uh, Jesus. Who, where is Jesus? In the hands of Mary. So his throne is Mary. <laughs> when the uh, the wise men who represent mankind is worshiping the infant Jesus were in the hands of Mary. So then we have uh, uh, Matthew that um, the uh, the flight to to Egypt mm -hmm. because uh, Herod wants to kill the, uh, the the infant Jesus. There's one thing about that I, I I've heard many people say and it's kind of I kind of important, which is that they were inhabitants or citizens of Judea. So they were they were people of the Roman Empire. And then going into Egypt, Egypt also was a province of the Roman Empire. So they didn't go as undocumented immigrants. No. They had citizenship. They were um, they were in, away from home, mm -hmm. but they were not Um, you know, vagrants of sorts. They had rights. So uh, the idea of them going, leaving their home, yes, but they weren't illegals. Be beautiful, beautiful. Let's go to a small break because now it's, it's just about the time, time to do it. And when we come back, Father, we also go to the next quote. And also, what is exactly the meaning of the name of Our Lady? Because the church gives us a beautiful litany, the litany is uh, the holy name of Mary, and I think that's going to enchant probably 
the audience in this day so special that is the the birthday of our lady. So please stay at, stay at the end. We we come back very very soon. Salve Maria. I'm Father Ryan Murphy of the Heralds of the Gospel, and I'm delighted to extend an invitation to each and every one of you. In the midst of our busy lives, it's crucial to take a moment of reflection, of solace, and of prayer. That's why I would like to personally invite you to join us every day at 3 p.m. for a special and powerful devotion, the Divine Mercy Chaplet. The Divine Mercy Chaplet is a beautiful prayer that embodies the boundless compassion of our Lord. It's a time to come together as a community, regardless of where we are, and lift up our intentions, our hopes, and even our burdens to the heart of Jesus. Imagine all around the world, countless voices uniting in prayer at this very hour. It's a moment of connection, of spiritual unity, and of seeking God's mercy in a troubled world. So mark your calendars, set your alarms, and make a commitment to join us each day at 3 p.m. Tune in and experience the transformative power of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Let this be a sanctuary of peace amidst the noise of life. And thank you for being a part of our Heralds Canada YouTube channel. Together, let's embark on this journey of faith, hope, and mercy. I'm looking forward to praying with you every day at 3 p.m. May God's love and mercy shine upon you always. And until we meet again, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So welcome back to the second part of the of the program today, of the episode. And uh, we are, with this episode, fully dedicated to Our Lady. So we wanted to delve a little bit into the meaning of the name of Mary. Because the Church has so many beautiful things. And I don't know, Father... Again, we have, so many, we have so many things to say. Of course, it, of course, it was a Hebrew name, and apparently the meaning of the name is the ocean. She's the ocean. She's all the waters, you know, which represents what the grace. She's the mother through whom the, the grace comes to uh, to the faithful. So, uh, and very often the uh, the grace of God is uh, represented as uh, as the water as the ocean and Saint Bernard and other saints immediately relate her to the star of the sea the star and of the those sea. beautiful the according to Salut de Montfort when you read the, the true devotion he says that Mary means uh, Lady of Light beautiful. so Salut de Montfort if somebody wants to argue with him sure. he can go yeah. so it's also a beautiful beautiful name right and and again the church gives us a full litany huh, of uh, of the name of Mary. And of course, actually, that name was given by God Himself hmm, to to Anne and, and Joachim, and the meaning is is the meaning that God wants it to be. Yeah. So, and I don't resist to read a couple here, Father, if you permit. Yeah. Is that okay? We have a Mary, flower of Jesse, Mary, immaculate virgin, Mary, light in darkness. Beautiful. That's how beautiful it is, and especially in these times where darkness seems to be coming around the church, coming around goodness, coming around. The nativity happened at night, and apparently there was a tremendous light that came in the moment in, in which the infant Jesus uh, was born. And here we go. Um, Mary, star of the sea. Mm -hmm. And also this, uh, this one that is Mary... Our Lady Mary, our Queen, Mary, Queen of Glory. Wow, beautiful. what a, what a beautiful. She's also the morning star. Mm -hmm. The star that comes at night, announcing that the sun is going to rise. Mm -hmm. Who is the sun? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And she's the one who's, who announces, announcing that Jesus is going to be born. So when in the history of mankind, Mary appears, she's announcing that Jesus is going to, uh, to be born. And it's very interesting that when Mary appeared in Fatima, she wanted to appear to, with that morning star. According to Lucia, she had on her dress a star, and that was a morning star. It means that a new age of, um, of grace, uh, of, of beautiful things, is going to come, and it is announced by Mary. New times and a new, new era. 
Well, exactly. That's so beautiful. That's great. Very good. So, but Father, there are about 15 quotes in the Gospels just about Our Lady. Is that just a number correct? 15 or is it 15? 15. 15. In, in, the, in the New Testament. In the New, in Testament. New Testament. Then we have St. Luke when he uh, narrates that the infant Jesus, when he was 12 years old, he goes to the temple and he remains in the temple in order to to speak with the doctors of the uh, of the law. Mm. That's fascinating because a male was um, a, a person was not allowed to publicly speak until they were thirty. You're so right. for him to walk into the temple, twelve years as old. though he as though he owns the place, and exhibit the type of divine intelligence he must have. Because there's two ways of showing intelligence. One is through what you say. But you can imagine the questions he would make that caused all these men, their minds just to turn, going, who is this boy? Of course. If he, if he was a common boy, they would have put him away to go well, out immediately. Of here. immediately. If he was speaking idiocies, exactly. he would have been expelled by one of the guards. But he sat there and was asking, they were fascinated. Precisely. According to, I think it's um, Anne Catherine Emmerich, that was the point in which Annas and Caiaphas already started to plot his death. Yes, because if he's 12, we're exactly. talking about 21 years before the Passion. Yeah. So that completely makes sense. They'd already course. seen, they'd already made their decision. Exactly. He had, to, he had to be taken care of. And he was there for three days. It was not just, uh, you know, half an hour or two or three, no. <laughs> for three days, he was uh, in the temple, you know, uh, asking questions and answering questions, etc. We can imagine the good ones who were there. The ones who were waiting for the coming of the glory of Israel, they were looking, saying, "Maybe this is it." And then Our Lady walks in and said, takes them away. They're like, "No, leave them with us, exactly. please." Can you imagine Simeon? We have Simeon. Would he been still alive? Uh, uh, no, he wasn't anymore, right? Maybe not. No, maybe no, not. No, 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 but because this is almost twelve years after. Right? Yes, he was already very old. Exactly. Very, very who knows? Old. And but, the, the tradition has it that after he saw. The little that was baby it. Jesus, he, he, he went back he to his died. home and died. And died. Yeah, beautiful. But his eyes. still, you have you have you had good people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had good people who no, were waiting no, for, for sure. the coming of of the glory of Jerusalem, and seeing that they were like, "This is it." Unfortunately, there was no evangelist who was there to to write down because there must be a wonderful conversation. That must have been Our Lady that told the evangelist. To write this, no? Exactly. Because she was well, the one the, that the biggest, saw yeah. uh, The biggest part that she tells is the part that she, when she arrives with St. Joseph and her questions to him and his answer, which didn't give her much um, uh, sympathy. Yeah. Um, but they weren't there for the other part. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's fantastic. So then we have the next one is the wedding in Cana. Mm. Already our Lord is 30 years old. And the first miracle that uh, Jesus does in his public life was asked by Mary. So, you know, she is the one, he, she's the cause of this miracle. She's the one who asked for this miracle. Huh? And it's a spectacular miracle. So many liters of wine, by the way, there was no stinginess involved. Oh, no. It was liters and liters, liters of and water. And, and, and that's fond. an important part for us to remember that in our Catholic Bibles, of course, it's very clear that it's wine. Our Lord can took yeah. water into wine because some of the Baptist Bibles, they say that it's juice. And if you think about it, in a hot place with no refrigeration, that would not have been a gift. That would have been a no, curse. Of course, exactly. You're stuck with 600 liters of juice. What do you do Terrible. with juice? Exactly. Well, what do you do? You attract all the animals and everything else. And, and it lasted for several days because the feast was for several days. So, juice, imagine. No, 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 I don't want to imagine. What happened, yeah. But it's interesting, um, in, the, in the Ecclesia Medica of John Paul II, this is an important part that he talks about. He says, it's Our Lady guiding everyone to do the will of our Lord. And in that, in that same way, Our Lady is within our lives, guiding us towards what our Lord wants us to do. Do whatever He tells you to do. One it's not just important. it's not just wobbly kind no. of kind of do do it no. if you feel it's the right no. thing. No, and that's how the miracle happens. Exactly. Even when you may say that our Lord wasn't exactly very disposed to do such a miracle, Our Lady kind of pushes Him into it, and. That's what the, the letter was talking about, that into the evangelization of the Americas, 
uh, Our Lady would be instrumental. So what is the Lord Jesus Christ telling to us, telling to, to all the faithful in the world? If you need a miracle in your life, you have to ask it to Mary, and then I will do it. <laughs> it was not in the plans, it was not going to start, no. and Our Lady changes the mind of, the divine mind, if you want. Then we have Matthew 12, 46, 50, when, when uh, Mary comes and is looking for Jesus and he's teaching. Mm. Mm. Then we have uh, Matthew 13, when in Nazareth he is rejected by his own people. And Mary, Mary is there. Then we have the uh, in the Gospel of St. John, when um, Mary is at the foot of the cross and Jesus is going to say, Behold your mother. So this is the testament of our Lord Jesus Christ. The last will of our Lord Jesus Christ is, this is your mother. It's beautiful. And it's also beautiful the fact that, I mean, Our Lady could have just either died earlier or shortly after the Passion. And she remained here to guide the, 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 the beginning of the Church. Because uh, it was also trusted, the Church was trusted to Our Lady. Precisely. The places where Our Lady was... The church didn't have heresy problems. Mm -hmm. Ephesus, which was a major area where Our Lady lived, um, where the Council of Ephesus happens, where they just, they, they threw away the uh, the extremely anti Marian Nestorius. Nestorius's problem was mm -hmm. with Our Lady, of course. Yeah, he, his problem was that she cannot be special. Why? Because she's a woman. <laughs> it's like, okay, no. that's your argument? Um, the same as the devil, eh? Yeah, it's like, no. <laughs> How come a, a woman? And when the people heard that the council was going and that there were people arguing against the Theotokos, the God-bearer, the mother of God, they protested in front. They were threatening to burn buildings down because no one could offend the mother of God. But this area didn't have heresy problems. That's where the Stations of the Cross come because Our Lady brought them from, from, from the Holy Land. Uh -huh. That's where that tradition comes from. And it's interesting, those areas where Our Lady was, there was no problems. Absolutely. Where Our Lady wasn't, uh, there were problems. So at that moment, actually, Mary becomes the mother of the Church. Huh? By God's decree, He decrees, she is your mother. And then the final one is the Act of the Apostles, chapter 1, when they are in the upper room, in the cenacle, and they are waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. They are with whom? With Mary. And actually, this is the moment in which the Holy Spirit really um, breathes on, on the church, and the church takes uh, life. Don't forget, when Peter, who shamelessly denies our Lord and falters, when he comes to his senses, when that line of where he sees the serene eyes of our Lord, he realizes what he has done. He, different than Judas, goes searching for whom he searches for Our Lady, and he begs pardon for what he had done. Judas didn't have that type of relationship, didn't have that type of devotion, and he goes and hangs himself. That's kind of an indicator for ourselves. If the first Pope had that type of trust and devotion to Our Lady, should we follow him, or should we follow uh, Judas? <laughs> That's a question. You can answer it yourself at home. <laughs> and it's very nice because actually St. John at the foot of the cross was representing Peter, was ashamed to be there because he had just denied him. So he was ashamed to be there. He didn't felt, you know, um, worthy. worthy of being there. So John takes him place. Wonderful. Has a tremendous meaning. But huh? then we end up with the, with the resurrection in which John is faster, but John waits for Peter to arrive. Beautiful. Beautiful. But now, there is something also beautiful in here, and I think it's central because uh, in the Proto-Evangelium, but the one that comes from Genesis, mm -hmm. uh, in which um, we talk about the heel, you know, that is going to crush yeah. Satan until the, the end of times. Okay, uh, that's very important, because if there is someone the devil really hates, it's Our Lady. And Father, can we touch a little bit on that? so that uh, the audience will be either reminded or, you know, sometimes we, we can delve into that a little bit more in detail about this. Yes, because uh, as our Lord Jesus Christ is the one who is going to redeem the sin, hmm? and our Lord Jesus Christ is the son of Mary, Mary is the one who is bringing the Redeemer to the world. So 
Mary is the one who bring the one who is going to destroy completely the plan of the devil. So he hates Mary as much as he can, you know, <laughs> because she is the one with, who is naturally speaking much more inferior to him because he's an angel. Nevertheless, in grace, she is much more than than him. So he feels completely offended and completely, you know, crushed, uh, crushed and uh, and worthless because this woman, in her innocence, she is going to crush his head. The first woman listened to her, listened to him, and the second one crushes his head. Precisely. Right there's the issue, right? She's the new Eve. Maybe the, the new Eve, one of her beautiful titles. She's the one who um, who who is not going to eat an apple. And actually, you know that there is a statue of Mary with an apple, no? And in her hand, yes. <laughs> and and Mary is kind of saying, this apple will never go through my throat. <laughs> actually, there is a beautiful legend as well. Very, very short. Sorry to, 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 to interrupt here, but it's also beautiful because tradition tells that there was a man who had a plantation of, of, of apples, uh, of apple trees, and then he was blind. And so a lady was passing by with a child Jesus, probably on, on their flight to Egypt or somewhere else. And then she goes very humble and she asks the owner for three apples, right? One for St. Joseph, one for the child Jesus, and one for herself. Now imagine if you're passing by and you have so many trees, but no, a lady very, very respectfully asks the man for, for permission to have three apples. And the, the story is beautiful because the moment the the child Jesus eats the apple presented by our lady, the man recovers his his eyesight. Beautiful. You know, he stops being a blind and actually, you know, he's record. So it's one of those things that again, sorry, are not in the in the in the gospels, but are so beautiful and that's tradition and that's an immense richness. Oh, there, there are many the many Church. stories that. Um, are absolutely fantastic, but his piety that, is, and he's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But because actually we we don't know the whole story. We we know that there's much more than what is written, and it's beautiful things that unfortunately, um, because of our sins or whatever, we still don't know. But one day we will know them, and we will be extremely. The end uh, of the gospel of Saint, Saint John. Yes. No. So exactly. obvious there that. Uh, well, he openly attests. No book can contain everything no that book our can Lord contain did. Everything our Lord did. And anyone who thinks that St. John is wrong, bluntly put, he's an idiot, because St. John knew better than anyone else. Absolutely. And he writes that, and he's just saying, listen, this is the important parts. No one's going to be able to do everything. Precisely. I would say that the, the Gospels is just a summary. You know, it's mm -hmm. a very shortened uh, version of everything that but happened. But what a summary, you know, because, I mean, we are a still divine, talking divine about that 2,000 years late. Mm -hmm. it's and, and it's full full of uh, of meaning and full of uh, uh, richness. Then we have many indirect references to Mary. The most important one is in the last book of the the, the, mm. uh, the, the Bible. So The it, Revelation. She is in the first book of the Bible in Genesis. She, uh, she is going to cross... Uh, your head, and then in the book of Revelation we have in chapter eleven, when it is said that the woman uh, will be clothed with the sun. So the sun, the sun, who is the sun? Is Jesus. So the woman will be clothed, you know, by <laughs> with the uh, by, by God Himself. Uh, like who, in, in the way she appeared in Fatima as well, because when Sister Lucia uh, comments, it, it was a lady that was clothed. With light, exactly. we have the joy here to have on set Our Lady of Fatima. This is actually, you know, the depiction. The closer, uh, the closest Sister Lucia could get from, uh, you know, for for her description. But how can you um, describe someone who's made of light? It's, uh, <laughs> it's difficult. You know, superhuman. Precisely. There are no words actually, so you have to to speak with symbols because there are no words. So this woman. Uh, will uh, bring forth the uh, ma a male child who is to rule all the nations. Who's that? <laughs> the son of Mary. <laughs> She's the that, queen. That's one of the issues with people who are quote unquote Bible Christians mm -hmm. who deny the place of Our Lady. I mean, these types of quotes, I don't know how you work with it. Like, I don't, I don't see where you're. Mm, even 
without revelations. We just go to Luke's gospel and the Magnificat, um, the Annunciation. All nations will call me blessed. All nations will, all generations will call me blessed, except for this segment of people who say that, no, it's too much, and we just, we like Jesus, we don't like you. All nations will call me blessed. Um, and the element that our, our Lady's voice, whenever she speaks to our Lord, is that of closeness and of how can you do anything else? Who doesn't feel offended if somebody comes and lacks consideration for his mother? Or if even offends his mother, because some say crazy things about, about Mary, etc. They offend the, well, it's offensive. It's the mother of the Creator. So, you know. And it is a complete lie uh, to say that the devotion to Our Lady was a later invention by the Roman Church. No. This is completely based. It goes based. in the same bucket as Constantine being the founder of the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. It, oh, is, no, it is wrong and it's undeniable that the early Christians already had devotion to Our Lady. The catacombs, at most the catacombs, the necropolises in the East had images, paintings, of course, very, very rude presentations because artists weren't the best of the time. Right? But of Our Lady... As the as the mother, uh, a consoler of the afflicted, for the ones who had died, um, we have the subtum presidium. We fly to your patrons, Holy Mother of God, which is translated from Greek to Latin, and that was something that was very prevalent within the early church. So we have prayers to Our Lady. So what does that mean? And you have to to say that that, that the the apostles and and, and the, the the first disciples they were wrong because as soon as our Lord Jesus Christ went up to heaven, they went to Mary. So they, they, That's yeah, wrong. They are wrong. <laughs> no, they could have should have kicked Our Lady out of Rubbish. the uh, out Rubbish. of the out of the upper room before Pentecost, because Pentecost was for them, not for her. Precisely, exactly, because she was the spouse of the Holy Spirit, so she had already the Holy Spirit. The but Holy Spirit I'm saying was with, for them. with this concept, she had no mm -hmm. business. Actually, her being present broke social norms because men and women didn't stay Precisely. together. Precisely, exactly. The fact that she was there was a position of supreme honor and respect and that of a mother mother figure and it's just it's just insane she was a queen mother, mm -hmm. the queen mother. and that's the the the, the 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 image that we get from solomon right where mm -hmm. we have um also the queen mother yeah the, the the mother of solomon is treated with supreme deference but we see what the same woman when she goes to david asking on behalf of Solomon, mm -hmm. she lays prostrate, she doesn't have the same deference. In the Jewish world, the Queen Mother had supreme deference. You know, there were three other children besides Solomon, mm -hmm. and one of them is yeah. Nathan, who's, uh, out of whom uh, Joachim, the, the father of our lady, descends. Beautiful. So it's, it's just, just a, one of those interesting notes. We... Um, where is also Mary? It's in a very important document of the beginning of the church, the Apostle Creed. Hmm. Yes. She makes it to the Apostle Creed, and Peter is not there. <laughs> Funny, no. no? <laughs> Peter is not in the Creed, but Mary, yes. No, Martin Luther, no, <laughs> no. by the way. <laughs> but you see that the, the importance, um, and this is said in the early church documents, that the, um, the shrub of Mariology, the study of Our Lady, is what protects Christology. So if you take down the, the shrub, the shrubbery of our, the role of Our Lady, very soon the role of Christ, who Christ is, is destroyed. Completely destroyed. Either you fall into an Arian, which is that you deny his true divinity, and you make him into kind of a demigod, a kind of Greek demigod type situation, or you flip to the point that he is merely God and not man at all. Or you get the... the, the um, a third option is that basically he was a ghost. That's why the church, you know, uh, very quickly, a hundred years after the uh, go, getting out of the of the catacombs, at Ephesus, they had to declare, they wanted to declare Mary the mother of God, not yeah. just the mother of Jesus, the mother of God. But the devil always steps on his tail because the church wanted it, but there wasn't an opportunity. And the devil tempted a man called Nestorius mm -hmm. to do stupidities, and which facilitated that to happen. Him and Dioscorus. Dioscorus is another, another interesting uh, oh, character. That sounds like a good topic for another episode. <laughs> yes, yes, let's put it in the, in the notes there.
It is. So, you know, if if you want to get closer to Jesus, you have to start by getting closer to Mary. Mary is the one who's going to bring Jesus to, to, to your heart. The same way that she brought Jesus to the world, she's going to bring Jesus to each one of us. None, none, of the follow, none of the holy women who are with Our Lady fled Our Lord at the difficult moment. <laughs> all of Our Lord's disciples all fled. Did. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's uh, if you wanted the uh, percentage points of fidelity, the ones who are with Our Lady are higher fidelity levels. Mm -hmm. That's a bit different. Very, very true. So, Father, maybe at this point, it would be very, very nice to mention. Um, I know everybody already knows that the heralds are promoting the consecration to Our Lady, but down in the notes of the program, go to that link, click on it, because this is very, very important. Today is the feast, well, when we're getting closer at, at, at this time, when the program is, is going to be uh, published in YouTube, is the birth of Our Lady, birthday of Our Lady. So. Why don't we get organized for those who have not done the consecration to Our Lady yet, according to St. Louis de Montfort? Don't hesitate. Go click there in that link because it's probably uh, a most uh, an experience that is completely life changing. Absolutely, it's the most perfect devotion to Mary to become a slave of love of her. So it's about two million people that have done the consecration with the Herald so far. And uh, it's a joy for us, and also we invite you, if you have not done yet, consider doing, because Our Lady, she cannot but bring us to hell. So what are we going to do now? Let's see a Hail Mary all together in order to ask her, her protection for each one of us and each one of you who are uh, assisting and watching and hearing this uh, podcast and for Mary. sure in the name of in the, uh, the name of our lady no sorry to interrupt again but if this is her birthday i'm sure she's not going to deny any graces we ask her absolutely hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed are thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy, holy mary, mary mother, mother of god, god pray, pray for, for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, death. Amen. amen the lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit may almighty god bless you the father the son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.